Hi, everyone. Happy Monday again. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about harness training. And we have done this before. There's a, um, there's a blog and video on our blog about training dogs who are a little bit sensitive to being harnessed. But today, I wanted to do a little more in-depth um, of an introduction for dogs who need extra steps, you know, slower work, who are really, you know, afraid of handling, um, afraid of objects in your hand, that kind of thing. So we're going to take it a little slower today. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, post them right underneath the video, wherever you're watching, and they'll come up for me. All right. Let's jump into the slides. So is your dog afraid of having their harness put on? And who is this for? So if your dog, when you pick up the harness, if your dog runs away, um, or maybe you can put the harness on or can start to, but your dog kind of freezes up or cowers or flinches or even growls or snaps while you're trying to get the harness on, then um, this training is for you. A few key points to keep in mind as we go through, um, this is kind of big picture. One is don't force it. I see this a lot. Um, if you have to corner your dog to harness them, then there's a good chance you're going to end up with more trouble in the future rather than having an easier time <laughs> getting them harnessed. So while you're doing this training, I'm going to have a few suggestions for you. Um, but, you know, try to find alternative options to forcing a harness onto your dog. It may be that just trying a different harness type will make a big difference to your dog. And there are quite a few uh, different types. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And of course, we're going to use positive reinforcement, usually treats, although you could um, try to use toys as well, to train your dog to happily stand still or sit still uh, to have their harness put on. And you'll need to go at their pace. There's no rushing this, unfortunately. And I know that... Um, it can seem painfully slow sometimes, but in the end, it's worth it if you can um, stop fighting with your dog about getting the harness on. Okay, so different harness types. Think about what bothers your dog most about the harness and then um, look at the options out there and see if you can't find something that will allow you to avoid the most problematic parts of harnessing. So some dogs hate things going over their heads but there are harnesses that you can uh, clip around the neck, around the back that don't need to go over their head. So that might be an option. Um, step in harnesses where the dog has to put their legs through, kind of like this ridiculous <laughs> um, harness in the photo here. A lot of dogs really struggle with those step in harnesses. They don't like um, they don't like their legs being handled. So. Um, a step in harness, you know, might not be the best choice for your dog if they don't love having their feet and legs handled. Uh, how many clips are there? Some harnesses have a ton of clips and they may be more secure, but that also means more handling. So a simpler harness might be a better starting point for your dog. And then, of course, in terms of walking your dog on the harness, it's important to know how many leash attachment points are there and where are they located. Most no-pull harnesses, harnesses that are designed to decrease pulling, they'll have an attachment in the front at the chest. If you don't need a no-pull function, then an attachment at the back of the harness is fine. Okay, we are going to get into harness training now. I think, uh, yeah, here we go. So I like to start with just a, what I call check it out, which is nose targeting, essentially nose targeting an object. Obviously, this dog in the photo is <laughs> being shown the harness he's chewed through, but closest I could find to a check it out photo. You're going to start by just placing the harness on the floor and not right next to you, a little distance from you, and then let your dog investigate. Oops, sorry about that. So let's take a look at some video. All right, this is little pancake and he is meeting his harness for the first time. You'll see several harnesses in these training videos today. We've um, tried a few different ones to, he only has three legs and it turned out to be a little tricky to find one that's secure enough that he can't wiggle out of. <laughs> but okay, I've just put the harness down. He's getting up to sniff it. 
And then I'm going to reward him for that. He's going to get a treat here again. Um, in this little clip here, I'm going to be tossing the treats, I believe, away from the harness so that he can move away to get his treat and then come back when he's ready, if he wants to. I like this for the very first step of uh, for fearful dogs. I don't want to keep the treats all right around the harness in case they aren't comfortable being there for so long. So see, he comes back, he sniffs, I toss another treat. Once your dog is readily, happily, you know, it's a fun game, approaching that harness, sniffing it, getting his treats or her treats, um, you can add your hands now. You're going to hold up the harness a little bit. Now, for some dogs, you can just pick it up and hold it um, in a kind of normal way, and that's no problem. Other dogs, that's going to be too much, especially if they have um, a negative history, learning history, with people holding harnesses or holding equipment. So I'll show you a couple variations we uh, tried with Pancake. So here I'm just holding it up. I'm not holding it so it hangs yet. See, he's, he's having a good time with this game. He touches it and he gets a treat. I, I toss the treat away to move him away and then I'm gonna hold the harness up again, touches it, gets a treat. Um, here's a, this little example here, I'm holding a harness a bit lower. For some dogs, this is gonna be less, um, less intimidating and it's even touching the ground a little bit. So some of the straps, instead of hanging and kind of swinging around, it's low enough that they can just rest on the ground. Same thing, he touches it with his nose and gets the treat away from the harness. Um, in this step, I was actually doing a different step, but I wanted to show you this variation, this option for adding your hands to the picture without totally holding the harness up. So for some dogs, you may need to just start with your hand touching the harness or lifting it up a little bit and having most of the harness on the ground when you get to this second step. So remember, you've already done that first step where the dog is approaching the harness no problem when it's just sitting on the ground and you're not touching it. And now you're adding your hands. And like I said, for some dogs, having hands on a piece of equipment uh, changes the picture a lot for them. So here I'm just holding it up a little bit. I was actually feeding in the head opening because that was a different step. Okay, any questions about this? these first two introduction steps? So harness on the ground, um, harness in your hand. I'll keep an eye as we go and um, answer questions as they come up. All right, so just now in the last step, I was holding the harness um, a bit off the ground, but I wasn't really holding it in a way that would allow me to put it on the dog. <laughs> so the next step is for the sensitive pups, I'm gonna hold the harness up more normally as if I was going to put it over their head or they were going to put their own head through it. And one um, important point here is that I'm going to reward at the opening where the head, the dog's head goes through. I'm gonna then move, usually anyway, move the harness away from them after they get their treat to create that distance we talked about in the first step. So I'm not just requiring them to stay right next to the harness for a long time. But the point of this sort of feeding in this particular location is to start to develop, um, really to reinforce behavior of poking their nose near that, that opening in the harness where their head needs to go, because that's going to be our next step. All right. So holding up as if Pancake's head can go through. And here, let me back this up a little. The criteria here, the, what he's getting reinforced for, I'm actually saying a little yes, which you can't hear on the video, is just nose targeting any part of the harness. But I'm delivering the treat next to that, um, the hole where his head needs to go. So I'm going to hold it up here. He just bopped it with his nose. I said yes, and then gave him the treat right there. And then I'm going to move it away, move the harness away, reintroduce it. Oop, another harness, sorry. Um, this one I wanted to show you because it um, it was it had the, the structure of this harness. I think this is the Webmaster from Roughware. Um, it's a little bit stiffer and it doesn't. Um, it's harder to kind of hold out of the way of the dog as they bring their head toward the opening. So that first step, you see, I I stuck my hand through right here through the opening of the harness, but let him retrieve the treat right at the edge nearest to him. And there he just touched it with his nose. I just give the treat right where he is. 
And now he's, you know, he's getting the idea you can see already. He's targeting that opening. Now, this little um, clip I showed you earlier, if your dog is having a hard time targeting the harness when you hold it up in a more normal position, um, you can do it like this. This is another thing we experimented with with Pancake, which is having it flat on the ground and I am he just has to target it anywhere, but I'm feeding him right at that opening where his head needs to go. But the harness is on the ground. It's not moving around. It's a little easier. All right. Uh, Jamie says, can the color of the harness help or hinder since they see certain colors and the type of, can the type of harness make a difference? Um, I don't know about color. I mean, if it's, if they had, say, a negative or positive experience in the past with a certain color of harness, it's possible that could affect their future training. But other than that, I'm not aware of, um, you know, one color of harness being easier or more difficult for them to train with if it's new for them. Definitely type of harness, yeah, can matter a lot, um, largely because some, you know, there's such a variation in how much handling you need to do to get a harness on a dog. Some har harnesses have like a single clip and they're pretty quick and others require quite a bit of handling. So if you're just starting out with your pup, a, a simple harness is probably the way to go. You can always move up from there if you would like to. Okay, putting the head into the harness. So I'm working with harnesses that um, the dog does need to put their head through or I need to put it over their head. Um, I like to start this training by having the dog targeting that opening, getting their nose right at that opening, and then starting to poke their nose through a little bit. Now, when you get to the nose through step, and I'll show you some examples of this, um, you're going to present the harness, but then how do you get them to poke their nose through if they haven't done it yet? Here, I will sometimes use a food lure, or if your dog knows to target a hand or a finger, I'll use a, a target to prompt that behavior. But you'll see we're going to be really, really conservative, with the, with the, especially with the food lure. If you're, you're using high-value treats, your dog is going to want to get them, but we don't want them to be um, pushed too hard where they really want to get that treat, so they're sticking their head forward, but they don't, they're still afraid of the harness. Uh, you can end up with a dog who um, ends up not feeling any better about the harness, um, is reluctant to go closer to it, and maybe is suspicious of you when you <laughs> when you hold a treat out, especially if you move the harness at, toward them after you present the treat. That's um, a recipe for trouble. So the first part of the sequence is always present the harness to the dog. That's kind of the cue ultimately at the end of this training for, you know, we're going to put this on, stick your head in. And then just at this first step, we're going to use something like a food lure or a hand target to um, prompt just a, a teeny bit of poking the nose into that, that opening where the head needs to go. Now, a couple of pointers, and um, these this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see people make and ends up setting you back quite a bit in training. Once you've presented the harness to the dog at the beginning of each of these steps, that's where it stays for now. Um, in a little bit later step I'll show you today, you are going to have to usually move it a little bit unless the, um, the hole there is big enough that the dog can easily put their head in with no help from you. But at this early step, if you hold the harness up and say use a food lure or, your, or a hand target, your dog's like, okay, I can do this. They go toward it and then you move the harness toward them. Um, it's going to scare them probably, and they're not going to trust you the next time you set that up. So um, be make show them what the deal is up front. Hold the harness there, and this is where it's going to stay. Like I said, we're going to change this in a minute, but at this stage, try to be a statue with that harness. Hold it really still while your dog is deciding how close they're willing to get. Um, another thing here... I forgot to mention is that I really like to move the harness away from the dog right after they get their treat. So here, I believe I'm using a food lure, but see, I'm right at the edge of the opening. I'm not trying to lure his head through yet. 
I'm actually not going to move his head through much at all, I don't think. Um, so just little nose right at the opening. Here's an example of using um, a hand prompt, kind of like a hand target. So I wanted to get that food lure out of my hand as quickly as possible. So I kind of showed the finger. Yep, he sticks his little nose there. He gets the treat. Um, if you need to have the harness on the ground like this, this is one way you can do it, is just have the treats in that opening and have that be your first step and nose through. And then you can start to lift it a teeny bit. I think I might do some lifting in this video. I can't remember. Here we go. Yep. So here, most of the harness is still on the ground. And he's just um, getting treats right at the opening there. And actually am holding it pretty still because he's choosing to keep his head there. And I don't want to scare him by moving it too quickly. Um, any questions about this ver this step of just getting that first sort of nose into the harness? Okay, so we are going to use food lures later in training, but at this stage where we're teaching the dog to put their nose and then their, their face <laughs> into the harness, I'd like people to, to stop using the food lures as early as you can because it's very common for us humans to get a little bit impatient and to try to use that food lure to um, persuade the dog to, to move a little more, a little further into the harness, farther than they actually want to. So um, I would go to a hand target or you can just hold the harness up and wait. Um, I have a... Okay, so this is what you were just doing. You would present the harness and then you'd use that food lure or hand target just to get that little teeny bit of nose poking through the opening. If we wanna get rid of the food lure, um, you can either just do a hand target or you can just wait. After you've done several repetitions of present harness food or present harness hand target, a lot of times the dog will start to poke their little nose in um, toward the harness by themselves if you just give them a few seconds to think about it. All right, so here's an example, I think of waiting. So here I'm presenting the harness and I'm not gonna do, I think, I'm not gonna do a hand or food prompt. Okay, I waited, he scooted forward, popped his nose in, and then he got the treat. This is the hand target, so no, another way not to use a food lure. And then here I'm waiting, and he goes for it. So he'd had some, some uh, practice hand targeting, and now he was willing to um, try it on his own. So what I would like for you to see before you move much beyond this step is a dog who's pretty enthusiastically sticking his head into the harness, at least, you know, his nose before we um, ask for much more. So here's an example of um, Pancake playing the game. There's not much hesitation here. He looks pretty excited. <laughs> and this is, I know this may not look in this video like it, but this is a, a very fearful dog who was completely intolerant of handling not too long ago. But these slow steps, um, allowed him to make this progress. Okay, so we've done, put your nose at the opening to the harness. We've done nose a little bit through. Now we're gonna look at getting the muzzle and the eyes then. So when I say eyes through, I mean just, you know, the dog's face into the harness, but not past the ears yet. That's kind of, can be a sticking point I'll address separately. Okay. Um, here I'm holding this open. If he choose at this stage, if they choose to <laughs> choose to leave their face there like that, I'll just that's fine. I'll just hang out and wait. So here he's got his eyes through, not the ears. So muzzle and eyes. And I'm feeding through. And then um, once the harness is getting a little bit more onto their head like that, I like to, um, I think I did this twice here. Let's see. Um, continue to feed them from my hand while I'm pulling the harness away. Because occasionally it starts to stick a little bit on their head at this point. 
And a lot of dogs find that kind of scary if you're pulling at something that's stuck on their head. So I find that feeding, <laughs> continuing to dispense that treat from your fingers or letting them nibble at the treat as you pull the harness back off their head is um, can avoid that problem of them being like, oh my God, something stuck on my head and then freaking out. Okay, years through, I wanted to spend um, some qu <laughs> some quality time on. You can see that this is much more um, detailed and broken down into smaller pieces from the previous harness training that we did. If your dog isn't super duper sensitive, you can go to the blog and look at that. Um, there's a two part video series on our blog that's a little bit um, less conservative, but this is for all those pups in our Facebook group and our clients whose dogs are having none of the harness. Um, and if you pick it up, they run away. Okay, so getting the ears <laughs> through um, through the harness, that hole in the harness. This picture is Pancake letting me know that I have been ignoring him too long and he would like to do some harness training. <laughs> um, okay, so if you have a harness where this um, this loop or the hole where the head goes is adjustable and you can open it up, then um, do that because then you may be able to hold the harness perfectly still and let the dog put their head all the way through on their own. But many harnesses aren't either aren't adjustable at all or are a little only a little adjustable for this part, that place where the head goes through. And so you may need to kind of push the harness a little bit um, toward them as they're pushing their head into the harness to get it over their ears or it'll kind of stick. Does that make sense? The um, A lot of these harnesses, it, that, that hole for the head just isn't big enough for the dog to put it through with no friction whatsoever. So you may need to move it a little bit. So you're going to watch your dog carefully. And so sometimes at this stage, I'll go back to using a food lure or a hand target um, because I need a little more force from the dog now. They need to really push their head through while I pull the harness back a little bit so their ears come through. Um, now at this stage, we're not going to actually let go of the harness and release the weight onto the dog's neck. That is a pretty big step for many dogs, something that I know probably a lot of you haven't, haven't thought about, um, but we are going to address that separately, having the weight of the harness come down on their neck. Um, we don't want to do at this stage. Okay, so here is an example of a harness where I could open up that, um, that opening there enough that Pinky could get his head through without me really moving the harness toward him. So what I, I'll show you what I did here. So I had it on the ground, I was feeding him and he was choosing to stick his head through like this. So I just kept feeding him um, down on the mat, which prompted, you know, prompted him to kind of stick his nose downward and now his ears are through and rewarded him several more times there. This one I did have to pull, you see how I kind of pulled it back a little bit? in order to get his ears through. And again, notice I here give him the treat and then I'm feeding him as I pull it off. Because remember that that feeling of the harness catching at their ears can, can cause a panic. So if you feed through that, a lot of times they're okay. It doesn't seem to bother them. Okay, so how do you know if you're pushing too fast? Um, and if anyone has anything that you wanna add to this list, um, please put it in the comments somewhere. But if you have a dog who shifts their weight away from you as you hold up the harness or do anything with the harness, obviously if they back away or walk away, they're telling you that's quite enough, thank you. If they kind of duck their head in order to avoid touching the harness, that's a good sign that the current step is too hard, you need to back off. If they are going for a treat, but they're kind of stretching their neck and maybe not moving their legs, so they're ooh, on their chippy toes trying to stretch forward to get a treat, um, that means that it's too hard and you need to back off and um, not put your food lure nearly so far uh, into the harness as you had it. Or if you just have hesitation after you've been doing quite a bit of this training. If you've done lots of reps and you're, you know your dog has been doing them pretty readily and all of a sudden they start, you hold up the harness and they just kind of stare at you. <laughs> um, don't assume that they don't know or they're being stubborn. Assume that be on the safe side and assume that they know what's going to happen next and they're not sure it's worth it. They're not sure the treat is worth doing whatever it is you're asking of them. So I have some examples of me screwing up training here. 
uh, saved just for you uh, with pancake. So here you're going to see me present the harness. Pancake looks at it and decides, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> I'm just going to lie down and sit down on my mat. Okay. So that was a clear no, right? So the right thing to do there was for me to remove the harness and say, okay, sorry, <laughs> let's try something easier. Here I moved it right toward him and he just backed right up. And then I tried to prompt him. I'll show you that again. Kind of tap the harness, say, no, go here. That was a bad decision. He just told me that he wasn't sure. And now he, see how he's kind of stretching. I think I have a better video of that. So again, I present the harness, he moves away. This was all one, not very good training session. I should have moved the harness away immediately instead of continuing to try to encourage him. Here, can you see how his back legs um, are staying put and his body weight is shifting forward? He wants the treat I have in my right hand, but he doesn't really want to walk toward the harness. So that's another sign I'm pushing too hard here. See, I prompt and he's like, mm. <laughs> he hesitated. And again, he tells me, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to back up and lie, and lie down on my mat or on my blanket. So those are all instances in which um, I should have backed off earlier or more quickly. And he was telling me like, no, thanks. That's um, the deal is a little too difficult. You know, the work you're asking me is uh, of me is too difficult for what you're offering. Um, it's a little too scary. And I needed to make it easier. Does anyone um, recognize any of that body language from when you work with your own dog? Do you have a dog who kind of, you know, backs away or like stretches to get the treat when you're trying to get them <laughs> to get into the harness? It's I see a lot in with client dogs. It's pretty common. Okay, this is the last step we are going to cover today. Um, when I was making these slides and the videos, I realized that it was way too much for one talk. So next week, we're going to finish up the process of actually clipping on the harness and helping your dog become comfortable moving around in it. Um, but if you're working on this, this is more than enough for one week. You probably won't get through all these steps in one week. All right, so releasing the harness weight. That means, you know, you're holding the harness up. Your dog puts their head through and now you let some or all of the weight down. So the harness is actually resting on their body, on their neck and back. Some dogs need just a partial release of weight. So you kind of relax your hand a little bit, but you keep your hand on the harness. So not all of the weight of the harness comes down on the dog. And some dogs, you might not even you might even need to practice um, putting something, releasing something onto their neck or back that is lighter and isn't even the harness. This is you know some other item that's lighter, like maybe a collar or something. Um, we didn't need to do this with pancake, but I wanted you to know that there's an option there. All right, so here we are. Pancake six head through. I give him a treat. Oh, that was a complete release. Sorry, I shouldn't. That was in the wrong place. <laughs> that was a little later. Um, oh, no, no, it wasn't. Sorry about that. Um, let me go back and explain now that I remember where I'm, what I'm at. So in the very beginning, when you release weight for the of the harness onto the dog, I like to just do it pretty briefly and then take it back off. So I was still kind of using a food lure to help him move his head forward when I was squeezing those ears through and then feeding as I take the harness off again. Here I left it on a little few more seconds and just kept giving him treats for hanging out with me with that harness on his back. I like this. This is the flag line harness. I really like this one because it's lightweight. So another example building a little bit of duration with the weight, um, the harness weight on the dog's back by doing a few treats a couple seconds apart. Now, once the harness is on your neck, um, on your dog's neck, hopefully not on your neck, um, this is an option that not everyone will need. And for some of you, it might be problematic, but I did a little bit of this with Pancake where I did, at least when he was settled down like this, or not moving around a ton. I did a little bit of hand targeting for, to get him to move his head around. 
um, to get the feel of the harness around his neck when he was moving. Now, this can be a problem if your dog is walking around a lot because you haven't clipped the straps. So if they step on one of the straps and they get stuck, they might um, it might scare them. So this is something to keep in mind. But he sometimes likes to um, train lying down. <laughs> So here he's got the harness on and I just did a little bit of hand targeting in different uh, at different angles. So he got used to moving his head around and feeling that harness on his body. All right. So this is our Facebook group um, address if you're not already in it. Um, Facebook.com slash group slash dog kind support. That's our free support community. Um, so jump in there if you aren't in there already and are looking for some help. Um, it's a very nice group of people. And otherwise, um, do I have any questions about these first steps in harness training? Is there anything you saw that you haven't tried that you think might help your dog? Um, anything you saw that you you think isn't a good idea or you tried and it didn't work well? Do you think this is too um, conservative for your dog uh, or not? Or do you think, no, I... I think this is about right, or maybe not conservative enough. Sometimes it's hard to know until you start trying. <laughs> so a lot of these steps um, I had in mind, but I didn't know for sure until I started working with Pancake, what he was going to tolerate, what would be too easy, what would be too difficult. So um, that's why there's a fair amount of experimentation in these videos. All right, everybody. I hope that was helpful. Watch next week for the finishing touches. So getting the harness on the dog all the way, clipped on, and then having them move around with it before we use it on a walk. Um, if you do try this out and have any problems or have some successes, we'd love to hear about it. Um, so please do comment under the video wherever you're watching it so we can see how it's going and, and give you some suggestions if you're struggling. All right, folks. Have a wonderful week. Um, stay cool if you're in Northern California or actually several parts of the U.S. It is really, really hot. Um, so I hope you have air conditioning and are enjoying some quality indoor time. Um, and remember, again, 4th of July coming up. Um, some of you have neighbors who won't let you forget already if they're setting off fireworks. And remember to contact your vet if you haven't already. Um, sorry about that. Contact your vet if you haven't already, if you think your dog might need some medication during the 4th of July to help get them through those um, that stressful time with the fireworks. Okay. All right, everyone. Have a great week. I will see you next week.